For the past 20 years, I've dedicated my life to education, to educating students of poverty, to educating students that have come from all corners of the globe and represent all the cultures and languages of the world. These same students have taught me that the prize in life is not about how rich you are, how much money you make, or how much money is in your bank account, or the possessions that you own. Life is about the opportunity that you get to impact the world around you, to make a difference, to leave a legacy. Just over a year ago today, I assumed the role of principal in my new school, a middle school with students ranging in the ages from 11 to 14, of about 1,100 students set in a community, struggling to keep its head above water, with high poverty, crime, and drugs. Our school was also facing huge challenges, from high staff turnover to issues of discipline and significant underachievement. Anything that had really been said or written about our school was probably true. We were, in all actual fact, one of the toughest schools in the state of Virginia. The students in my school were a magnified image of many of the challenges facing educators and communities around the world today. Our students are coming to school facing more and more trauma, poverty, and socioeconomic issues. Many of our students wouldn't have families and live with different types of relatives. Many of our students were growing up coming torn from war-torn countries. Many of our students, even today, were struggling just to do some of the simplest of educational activities such as reading, writing, and being able to do math. Recently, I sat down with a student, and we, we had a conversation around, uh, over Google Translate, and he talked about coming from a country that, where he saw his relatives torn apart by war and violence, and that he was coming to America to live the American dream of freedom and prosperity. Some of our students were just trying to make it each and every day. On another occasion, I sat with a student who looked really upset as somebody I cared deeply about. When I pulled him aside to talk to him about the challenges he was facing, he said his father had just been incarcerated, and no student was ready to be able to do learning at that point. Many of these students reminded me of my own stories growing up. I failed school academically. I failed many of my exams. My parents separated, and when I grew up, I grew up around what I thought was normal, but turned out to be not. When I, later in life, I learned it wasn't normal. I found out that growing up around too much drugs and alcohol. At an early age, a teacher told my mother that I wasn't very smart, that I was dumb, that I should be retained. No parent should ever hear that. No mother should ever hear that. Later on, a teacher asked me, what did I want to do when I grew up? And right at that time, the movie Top Gun was really popular, and all I could think about was being a jet fighter pilot. But again, I was told I wasn't smart enough. And then just before going to college, went to going to teacher's college, the school counselor said, that's not for you. You're not academic enough. These stories and seeing my story and seeing the stories of my children, they helped me remind, remind me to stay grounded to stay focused, to stay humbled, to build strong relationships, to care about my kids, to care about my community, to care about those students. Because you can't serve somebody that you think you're better than. So this is why all these experiences have driven me to disrupt the status quo, to change the game, to be relentless, to not be told what to do and how to do it, to educate this way just because it's been done that way. I was going to change the game and disrupt the norm to be better for my kids. I took over a staff. My staff had been struggling. My staff had been teaching out of compliance, ticking the box, looking for motivation, inspiration, looking to be unleashed. I said to my staff, relax. I love you. I got your back. Let go. Teach on fire. You have the green light. Teach authentic, relevant learning experiences and don't teach out of fear, teach out of passion and remember why you started. When we came together on the first day, we came together to build relationships together. And we built relationships on a field trip where the entire staff, we went and learned from our leaders that were right in front of us in the monuments of Washington, D.C. 
I said to our teachers, let's be relentless. Let's have each other's back. Let's have fun. Let's play. Let's learn. Let's make somebody's day. Let's take back our school and take back education. Let's do education the way education was meant to be done with the green light. I put my office in the middle of the school. The student's business is my business. And I painted, the, I painted, graffitied up the front of my office, and I painted the words on the, on the front of my door, words that said, all in and relentless. One day, I was standing behind the door, and I listened as some students walked by, and a student said, he's not leaving us. <laughs> at that moment, at that very moment, I knew the students were on that journey with us, that journey of legacy. I was fortunate that I had the full support of my school division, the people around me. We started off needing to overhaul our entire school. We started off with a mirror like this in the main corridor that was the centerpiece of everything that wasn't right about our school. And we took a sledgehammer to it this summer. And we went from this to this. You see, we changed the expectation of our school. We raised the expectation for instruction, for the vocabulary, the scenes, the things that our students would see in and around our school. We changed what it looked like. We brought daylight bulbs. We brightened up the school, the hallways. We put some of the world's most amazing leaders and game changers in front of them. You see, the expectation you set for your school becomes the expectation of everybody. We raise the expectation for all of us, and we raise the expectation for our students. We ask them what they wanted their legacy to be. We changed the vocabulary of our building. We talked about leaving nobody behind. We talked about our school as a fortress to stand on the wall to protect each other. We talked about one more round. We taught the kids one more round, that if you get knocked down in life, you get back up again, again and again and again, and you can't be beat. These became the traits and expectation of our school. And who puts a boxing ring in the middle of one of the toughest schools in Virginia? I did. We started to celebrate. We celebrated any chance we had, any opportunity we had to celebrate, we would celebrate, including, including impromptu assemblies. We asked our students, we, we surprised our most our highest academic performing students with a surprise assembly when they come back winning Battle of the Brains. We brought everybody out, we celebrated, we did black light parties. We brought our, our learning alive. We went to unlimited field trips. We did it all. We had fun again. We believed in our students. You see, when we changed our expectation around instruction and what was happening in the classroom, we went away from textbooks and hundreds of worksheets. We said, let's be authentic, relevant, and real. We talked about inspiring our kids, not requiring. We talked about motivating and not alienating our students. We asked our students to take ownership of their learning to be one with it, to be involved. We started talking about characteristics and traits such as love and kindness. Every day I get on the speaker and I start the day by telling the kids, if somebody didn't tell you today that they love you, Mr. Brewer's telling you today that he loves you. <laughs> you see, I didn't hear that word enough growing up. And I wanted to make sure that my kids and anybody I came into contact with got to hear that word every single time. This is what I want you to do. I want you to turn and talk. Turn to the person next to you and tell them right now, someone special with you. Tell me you love them right now. Go. You see? You see the power of love? You see what we just did? Imagine if every school had that feeling and sense of pride and love in their building. And I tell you what, make sure that you use that word and share it because you never know when the last time will be when you hear that word. 
This year, this year was one of the hardest, I went through one of the hardest things as a principal. One of the hardest things that I led my school through. This year we lost a student to youth suicide. I would do everything I could and more. I'd give it all up today to have one more conversation with that child. I'd give it all up today to have one more conversation with him. You see, we need to be the advocate for every single child. We need to be the voice for the silent voice for the every single child. Every single child deserves to have an advocate, an adult, somebody they can turn to, somebody that cares about them. I'd give it all up today to have one more conversation with him. You see, we talk to our kids that life doesn't give you a handout. There's no cookies in life. You don't get a trophy because you participated. We taught our kids to earn it. We showed you how to be relentless, to go one more round. But you, you had to own it. You have to do it. Because when nobody's watching, we find out who you are. Who are you? That's your legacy when nobody's looking. We find out who you are. Our parents give us their most prized possession, their child. It doesn't matter their circumstance. They give us their most prized possession. We said we don't just enroll students, we enroll families. We made everything free. We stopped asking our parents to to pay for something or to be in charge of something. We asked them to participate and we filled our stadiums. And the parents came out and came back. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Our children are an opportunity, not an obligation. We don't get to pick and choose which children come through our doors each and every day. You don't get to choose who succeeds and who fails. And worse still, you don't get to choose who's going to join the pipeline to prison. And our school was not going to be a pipeline to prison. We were not going to negotiate on our children. We're not going to negotiate on our children, our families, or each other. We were all in. I will go through a brick wall and back again for my students and staff. How far are you willing to go? We asked our kids, what's your legacy? What do you want to be remembered for? Your future is who you hang out with. What do you want your future to be? What do you want your legacy to be? When you come down the hallway, when you walk down the hallway, when people see you coming, what will they say about you? We asked our teachers, what would they say about you? When you look in the mirror each and every day, you have an opportunity to have a personal conversation with yourself and you're the only one that can answer the questions. I ask myself every day, was I better for kids? Did every decision I make, was I better for kids today? Did I leave it all on the line for every single child? Because remember, that's someone's most prized possession. When you look in the mirror, can you say you were better for each other, better for your colleagues, and better for the people around you? You see, this year, we lived our legacy. We lived our legacy. We fought. We showed the whole world what we could do. We had a slogan called, Rise Up. At our eighth grade graduation, we celebrated. We said we're no longer rising up, but we're back. We're here to stay, and we're going nowhere. Just this last week, the state of Virginia was able to officially announce that my school was fully accredited for the first time in years. Yeah. Woo! You see, we lived our legacy. We lived it through tears, heartache. We showed what love, what a school built on, built on love respect and legacy can do. 
I would like to leave you with this reflection of legacy today. Growing up in New Zealand, I learned the power of people, the power of respecting your elders, respecting those around you, making those around you better, being there for each other, leaving the place better than you found it, to advocate for the silent voice, to advocate for every single child, that every single person matters. That's legacy. And I'm going to leave you with this question. A teacher taught me this, and it asked the most famous question of them all. What is the most important thing in the world? And I'm asking you all it tonight. What is the most important thing in the world? It's he tangata, he tangata, he tangata. It is the people, it is the people, it is the people.